Good morning, everyone. I'm Cyrus Webb, and welcome to Conversation Daily News. Glad you all could be with us. Well, it's a brand new day, it's a brand new week, and that means it's a brand new opportunity for you to do something amazing, and it all begins today. But of course, you have your news headlines coming up on this Monday. We have a message from my book, Word That Choose to Live By, and in today's Entertainment Spotlight, you're part my conversation with Brian Moody of Kelly Blue Book. He's going to be helping you guys find the best vehicles for teens. You don't want to miss that. Enjoy today's broadcast. For Commerce and Daddy News, I'm Cyrus Webb with their Monday headlines. In international news, Ukraine says rockets strike mayor's office in occupied Donetsk. Pro-Kremlin officials on Sunday blame Ukraine for a rocket attack that struck the mayor's office in Donetsk, a city controlled by the separatists, while Ukrainian officials said Russian rocket strikes hit a town across from the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, among other targets. The attack from Russia's war in Ukraine nears the eight-month mark, Kiev also reported holding the line and continued fierce fighting around another area where Russian forces have claimed some gains amidst a seven-week Ukrainian counteroffensive that has led Russian troops to retreat from some areas around it. The municipal mayor's building in Donetsk was seriously damaged by the rocket attack. Plumes of smoke swirled around the building, which had rows of blown-out windows and a partially collapsed ceiling. Cars nearby were burned out. There were no immediate reports of casualties, Kiev didn't immediately claim responsibility or comment on the attack. Kremlin-backed separatist authorities have accused Ukraine of numerous strikes on infrastructure and residential targets in the occupied regions. They have said Kiev often uses U.S.-supplied long-range rockets, but have not provided corroborating information. Last week, the Kremlin launched what it believed to be its largest coordinated air and missile raids yet on Ukraine's infrastructure, The wide-ranging retaliatory attacks included the use of self-destructing explosive drones from Iran and killed dozens of people. Ukraine's presidential office said Sunday that Moscow was shelling towns and villages along the front line in the east and that active hostilities continued in the southern Kherson region. Kyiv reported at least six people wounded in the latest attack of Nikopol across from the Zaporizhia nuclear plant, Europe's largest. The strikes damaged power lines, gas pipelines, and a raft of civilian businesses and residential buildings, they said. Russia and Ukraine have repeatedly accused each other of firing at and around the plant, which is run by its preoccupation Ukrainian staff under Russian oversight. The region of Zaporizhia is one of the four Moscow illegally annexed last month, despite the fact that some 20% of Zaporizhia remains under Ukrainian military control. In national news, California city rests easier at the serial killer's arrest. Residents of Stockton, California, were able to rest easier following the weekend arrest of a man suspected of killing six men and wounding a woman in a series of shootings over a period of three months in Northern California, the city's mayor said on Sunday. Mayor Kevin Lincoln said he shed tears of relief when he was informed that the suspect, who police believe had terrorized Stockton since July, was taken into custody around 2 a.m. on Saturday. Wesley Brownlee was dressed in black, wore a mask around his neck, had a handgun, and was out hunting for another possible victim when he was arrested while driving around the Central Valley City, where five of the shootings took place, the police chief said at a Saturday news conference. The city was able to sleep a little bit better last night, Lincoln said Sunday morning. No resident of this city should have to walk around town looking over their shoulder in fear. The mayor credited residents of Stockton who called in hundreds of tips to investigators that eventually led to the arrest of the 43-year-old suspect. In entertainment news, Netflix sets $7 monthly price for its ad-supported service. Netflix next month will unveil the first version of its video streaming service with ads, giving cost-conscious viewers a chance to watch most of its shows at a steep discount in exchange for putting up with commercial interruptions. The ad-supported service is scheduled to debut on November the 3rd as Netflix tries to reverse a drop in subscribers. It will cost $7 per month in the U.S., a 55% markdown, from Netflix's most popular $15.50 per month plan, which is ad-free. Netflix's ad-supported option will also be rolling out in other countries. Besides putting up with roughly four to five minutes of ads during each hour of viewing, Netflix subscribers who sign up for the cheaper service also won't be able to download TV shows and movies to watch when their devices are offline. And finally, in more entertainment news, Halloween ends wins box office but renews streaming debate. No matter how you look at the numbers, Halloween Ends had a good opening weekend. Touted as the final showdown between Laurie Strode and Michael Myers, the slasher pick earned $41 million in ticket sales 
from 3,900 theaters in North America, according to studio estimates on Sunday. It's the first film to open higher than $40 million since Nope debuted in July, and it surpassed its budget production, which has been reported to be between $20 and $30 million. Including international showings, it boasts a global total of $58 million. The film also renewed an evergreen debate about day and time movie releases, and some in Hollywood are wondering whether it could have been even bigger if it hadn't debuted simultaneously on Peacock, NBC Universal streaming service. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's now time for a message from my book, Words That Choose to Live By. Enjoy. Good Monday, everyone. I'm Cyrus Webb, and welcome to Words That Choose to Live By. Today, surround yourself with individuals that support your vision who don't try to destroy what you are building. We all need someone. Just make sure that those who are with you are truly on your side, not just by your side. Have an amazing Monday. Brian Moody is featuring today's Entertainment Spotlight right here on Conversation Daily News. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Entertainment Spotlight. Brian Moody of Kelly Blue Book rejoined me on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about the best vehicles for teens. Well, that's something for me to think about with my nephew getting ready, I'm sure, to be hitting the road. Here's a bit of our conversation. This is always, I think, a tricky thing uh, for me. It's a little scary to think about my nephew driving, but <laughs> they're, they're growing up and these things happen. What factors should we we consider, Brian, when it comes to car shopping for teenagers? Well, you, for, for one thing, you just consider reliability, of course. That's one thing you want to consider. But also um, affordability. You want the price to be right for you and for your family and for the driver as well. Maintenance is something to consider. Some cars are less expensive to maintain and others are more expensive. But also safety features. Not all cars come with the same safety features. In fact, even cars that are the same model, say Honda Accord, they don't all come with the same safety features throughout the years. You have to do some research and figure out which ones are the ones, which trim levels, whether it's the EX or the LX or the XLE or whatever it is, those all come with different options and safety features, not just comfort features. Well, great tips there. Well, Brian, let's talk about safety then, because that is such a big one, I think, for all of us. What safety features should we look for in a vehicle? At a minimum, we think you should have um, traction control, stability control, anti-lock brakes, uh, of course, airbags. That's, you know, I mean, there are still, you know, remember airbags started to be a thing that were pretty common in the 90s, so someone really wanted to get like some cool 80s car. I would skip that for a teen. Um, you know, it's just probably not the right the right thing. But you can also consider other features if you have a little bit more money. Just, you can look at forward collision warning, blind spot monitoring, um, tilt and telescoping steering wheel, an adjustable driver's seat will help them get in the right position more easily. And, um, you know, parking cameras, 360 degree parking cameras, where you can see all the way around. And also headlights that turn themselves on and off as it gets dark and light again. Those are some things to look for. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Conversations Daily News. We better get on tomorrow with more news. Message from my book, Words That You to Live By, and of course, your entertainment spotlight. Until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversation Daddy News today, and let's go make it a great one.